In this module, we will look at uh, the digital technology, get an overview of digital technology. The areas of application for digital technology, of course, are computers, the new telephone networks, and of course, the new uh, phased introduction of television, the high definition television, etc. They would eventually be in digital form. What is the basis of digital technology? As in the case of analog technology, it's based on digital signals. Uh, digital signals are known as discrete signals as opposed to the continuously changing signals that we see in analog technology. Here are some examples of the digital signals where each signal can be assigned a definite value based on its height. Again, this axis can be voltage and often it is the voltage of the electrical signals and this axis is time and the height is the voltage strength me measured in volts. Uh, for a fixed period of time, uh, this voltage is kept at a predetermined value and the voltage is changed again for a fixed period of time. So each period can be assigned a digital value. In general, in communications and computers, we assign the values 1 and 0 for the two different states of digital signals. But one must bear in mind that it is not always necessary and required to assign 1 and 0. These kind, of si these kind of signals are known as binary signals. But it is also possible to have signals, digital signals that vary not based on the binary system but based on different system. In this case we have signals that take value like 1, 2 here, 3 here and so on. So this is the basis of the digital signal and uh, this particular time length in digital terminology is known as the pulse duration. This is the pulse duration and uh, generally speaking the pulse duration or the pulse duration uh, remains the same for signals of varying length 1, 0, 1 and so on. The greatest advantage of digital signal is that you can assign a digital value for a particular signal uh, pulse. So that is the strength because once you are able to represent anything using these digital signals, then it is possible to use the power of the computer to process that information. So what are the advantages of using a digital signal? Number one, you can use computer technology to process digital signals. Uh, when you use computer technology to process signals, you can do what? We can program the services, program the services. And when digital technology is involved, we could also have better quality transmission. And, and of course, we could have uh, faster communication as well. So these are some other things that we can use. Uh, one. Uh, we can use computer technology to process the signals. Two, you can program the services. And three, better quality. And four, faster communication. When we say that we can process the information during computer technology, that means that you can process data. And uh, if you can represent image in digital form, we could of course use co the computer to process the image. Likewise, we can also process audio and we could process video, provided we are able to uh, digitize all this information. And there is one other requirement. When you digitize the information, you should also be able to represent that in zeros and ones. So this is uh, extremely important. As we go further in the chapters and in the course, we will look at different ways of digitizing information so that they could be processed and communicated using digital technology. Uh, one of the things that needs to be addressed at this point is uh, the pulse duration. Pulse duration is an important issue when you transmit and in many cases the pulse duration is uh, determined by the clock speed. Many computers and other communication devices are controlled by an electronic clock. For example, if this electronic clock uh, worked uh, at a frequency of let's say 1 hertz, uh, which is 1 cy cycle per second, that is the frequency of this thing. So this, these pulses, the pulse duration can be a function of 
this uh, cycle. So because each cycle is one second, this pulse duration here uh, can be one second. So generally speaking, uh, what you want to bear in mind is the fact that the pulse duration is a uh, pulse duration is a function of the clock frequency. That's so. Then we can infer the following: the higher the clock frequency, in other words, if the uh, frequency is four cycles per second, which is higher than uh, two cycles or one cycle per second, then the cycle time in this case is one fourth of a second one fourth of a second if it is four cycles per second in the previous case the cycle length is one second here the cycle length is lower meaning that your pulse duration the pulse duration will be shorter when the pulse duration is shorter we could operate at a faster speed because of the fact in one second we can process four electronic pulses or digital signals as opposed to in this case as opposed to only one digital signal or one pulse in a second in a previous case. So in general the clock frequency is inversely proportional to the uh, pulse duration. Higher the frequency the shorter the duration but the clock frequency the clock frequency is, uh, let's say, clock frequency is directly proportional to the speed at which you operate. Here is an example. If you say that your computer operates at uh, 1.2 gigahertz and somebody else has a computer, let's say, it operates at 2.4 gigahertz, generally speaking, uh, you could say that this computer operates faster. Why is that so? Because this generates uh, clock pulses that are a shorter in duration so more pulses can be processed in a second meaning that more operations of the computer can be carried out in a second uh, so therefore 2. Point gigahertz uh, communication is faster likewise in the case of communication as well uh, you could see that higher the frequency generally speaking the faster the communication and faster the processing of information for communication